Do sales conversations make you feel awkward or pushy? It's time to ditch the outdated salesy strategies. Your guide, Nikki Rausch, will show you how to combine kindness with selling skills to meet your prospects where they are, and in the process, how to up-level your influence and income. Learn how to earn business easily and effortlessly. Here's Nikki. Welcome to the Sales Maven Show. I'm your host, Nikki Rausch. Today's episode is a solo episode. It's just you and me here. And we're going to be talking about sabotaging your sales success. This is something that uh, I have struggled with this past year. It's something that um, quite a few of my clients have struggled with this past year. And so I wanted to share some strategy around it, talk through it with you, see if it brings any insight or ahas for you as a result of the content that we're going to go through today. And if nothing else, please take away from this episode that I believe in you. And that even if you can't cheer yourself on, I am cheering for you and I will cheer for you. And if you need a little one-on-one uh, cheering, please reach out to me. You can reach me at Nikki at YourSalesMaven.com and um, just let me know you're in need of a little pick-me-up. So this idea of sabotaging your sales success, one of the things that uh, I know i personally struggle with. We'll see if you do. But I know that a lot of clients have been struggling with this lately because I'm hearing it in conversations over and over again, is a lot of self-judgment. Oh my gosh, are we so good at passing judgment on ourselves? And, you know, our judgment is um, oftentimes not always rooted in facts. Sometimes it's rooted in how we feel. Sometimes it's rooted in other people's opinions. There's a lot of things that can influence the judgment that we have of ourselves. And it is so detrimental when you find yourself in these places of negative um, kind of self-talk and judging yourself and having all these opinions opinions and thoughts around all the things that are not the most positive about yourself, it completely um, oftentimes causes you to shut down from selling. And that's not good for your business. <laughs> and it's hard to sell your way out of when you're feeling like you're in this self-sabotaging mode because there's so much self-judgment going on. So there's a few things that I want to just bring into the room with us today in case any of these are helpful to you. Um, I was really blessed to have a conversation earlier this week with a client, um, and she was sharing some of these things that she was going through and asking for some insights and some suggestions around mindset. Because when she was explaining to me what was going on for her, like I was just like, oh, self judgment, self judgment, self judgment, self judgment. It was like every statement that she was making, there was so much judgment around there in there for her. And I know, you know, about I think it was two or three days even before that session with her, I found myself <laughs> having to kind of check myself a little bit. Um, having a conversation with somebody who I'm really close with and really kind of in tears and just feeling like a complete failure. Now, there's lots of proof <laughs> in areas where I'm not a complete failure, but yet sometimes one of the things that we do when things are not going well, when um, we had higher hopes for something, when we felt disappointed in our behavior or in the way that we communicate or in an offer that we put out, um, it can be super easy to kind of make that one thing that didn't go well become the everything isn't going well. So that's one thing you're going to want to pay attention to. I know it's easy. It's the, what is that saying? Like when you're having an argument with your with your significant other and it's like you bring in everything but the kitchen sink. I feel like sometimes when things aren't going well and we have some self-judgment, all of a sudden it's not just like, oh, I kind of dropped the ball here or, oh, I'm not happy with my performance in this one area to making it a much bigger thing. And now it's like, I'm the worst person in the whole world, which is probably not true. I don't know. You might feel differently if you have an opinion about 
whether or not I'm the worst person in the world, maybe keep it to yourself, <laughs> especially if you think I am. I don't need to know. <laughs> um, I have my own self-judgment. <laughs> okay, so here's some of the things that I use to help get myself out of these sabotaging type um, situations so that I could continue to grow my business, so that I can continue to show up for my clients. Um, one of the things that I do is I always think back, and I've talked about some of this on the podcast before, and I certainly have talked about it in trainings before, is this idea of that your performance will be within a range. So if you think on a scale of like, you know, zero being like nothing and then going all the way up on this scale and 10 being like, like you're so on, like you you couldn't make a misstep if you tried. You're You're just like the best possible version of yourself in that moment would be like a 10. And unfortunately, it's unrealistic to think that in every situation um, throughout the day, all the interactions that you have in your business or um, sales copy that you write or offers that you put out, that you're always going to be at a 10. It's an unrealistic expectation. And yet, I find that myself included, and a lot of my clients tend to hold themselves to this standard of like, if I'm tired, if I'm sick, if I am sad, then I think if I'm not at a 10, I have failed. And when you can take a step back and when I take a step back and go, well, really, if my performance will be within a range, my goal is to just try to be the best version of wherever I fall on that spectrum today. So sometimes when I'm not my best version, I'm usually like maybe a four out of a 10. And when I'm really on, like when I just feel like, man, things are really running smooth and they're cooking and I feel really confident, maybe I'm at an eight and a half. I don't know if I ever reach a nine. I definitely can't think of times, very many times in my life where I've said like, ooh, that was a, that performance was a 10. Like, you know, no, no room for improvement there, Nikki. Um, I don't know about you. I hope you have lots of 10 examples in your life or at least eight and a half. But when I'm at a four and I'm thinking my performance will be within a range, my goal typically is to get myself to like a four and a half. If I can really stretch myself, maybe I'd get to a five. But maybe four is really truly all I've got to give that day. So I'm going to accept that my performance will be within a range and I'll just try to be the best four out of 10 that I can be today. So I was giving this advice to a client, like I said, this week, and I was asking her because she's measuring everything to a 10. And I said, well, what if you just each day or each situation, it could be each sales call that you're on or each email that you're going to write or, you know, hour by hour, just ask yourself, like, where do I fall on the spectrum today? Or right now in this moment, and maybe some days you're a six or some moments you're a six. Just try to be the best six you can be. And if you can get it to a six and a half, awesome, that's enough. And if you can get it to a seven, great. But expecting yourself to get from a six to a 10, it's a really big stretch. And you're being incredibly unfair to yourself, expecting yourself to rise to that kind of occasion. You probably wouldn't look at somebody who is you know, sick or has been sick for months and expect them to show up and just be a 10, right? You would give them grace. There's no reason you shouldn't be able to give yourself this kind of grace. This last year, um, I've been somewhat vocal about this, but you know, as the honestly, the last 12 months have been some of the hardest of my adult life personally. And there are days where I can honestly say in the in the year of 2023, I probably worked the last, the least amount that I've ever worked um, because my performance is within a range. And there are some days where I could get myself to like a five or a six for that session with a client. And then at the end of that session, I had nothing left to give. So I, unless I had a client work, of client expectations, there were a lot of things that didn't get done this last year. And there were times where I thought my business would just completely crumble. And luckily, I had some really strong supports around me. One in particular is my CFO, uh, Michelle Cooper. 
And Michelle and I had many a meetings over the last couple of years, honestly, where not that I expect to do this very often, but I think I cried through a lot of our sessions and we were talking about you know, we're supposed to be talking about money. Michelle has become a very close friend too. So she's been a great confidant. Uh, So we weren't always just talking business, but there were times where I was really struggling just to even get through some of our, just our normal monthly session. And um, she said something to me at one point and I wrote it down on a sticky note. And now for the life of me, I can't find it. So I'm not sure what I did with it because it was on my computer for a long time. But she said to me, you know, the only problem you really have is thinking that the way you're feeling right now is a problem. And I was like, oh, yeah. And that kind of goes back to what I'm talking about today is this idea of all of this self-judgment. I was embarrassed to be crying in a business meeting. (laughs) You know, I was embarrassed to have to say that I was struggling so much um, and and just say like, I just am not even prepared sometimes to have these conversations because I'm so emotional. Uh, One of the things I learned in all my years of (laughs) studying neuro-linguistic programming, um, there were a lot of tears, not in the first year of study, but in the second year, I decided like, I was just gonna let it all hang out and I wasn't gonna hold anything back. (laughs) And I cried through most of that training too, because there was so much deep work that was happening and so much healing that was happening. Um, and my NLP teacher, who also was really quick, uh, tears were quick to come for her. Tears have always been quick to come for me. And she said, it's emotional currency, tears. Think of them as emotional currency. And I thought, man, I am rich in emotional currency because tears come easy. And sometimes they're very hard to hold back. So this idea of performance will be within a range. Sometimes my only problem is thinking that the way I'm feeling is a problem. So I would challenge you to maybe do this for yourself as well. Like if you're beating yourself up right now about something that hasn't gone the way you wanted it to go, and it's keeping you from moving your business forward, it's keeping you from putting offers out, it's keeping you from reaching out to somebody who you want to connect with, any of those things that are holding you back, this is where you're sabotaging your sales. And is it because of self-judgment? And if it is, what can you do to overcome it? Here's the other thing I would think about um, is I find that this idea of your performance will be within a range. It also goes back to my years of studying neurolinguistic programming, where we found that most of the time when we were stuck is we're in what's known as digital thinking. There's digital thinking. Digital thinking is yes, no, black, white, true, false, love, hate. It's like you only have two options, you know, yes or no. The lights, think about it like a light switch. The light switch is either on or it's off. And that is digital thinking and you can get stuck there. And then there's analog thinking, which is the different type of light switch where you can click click it up once and it gets a little brighter and click it again, a little bit brighter, click it again, a little bit brighter, click it again. You know, and you can like really turn it up where it's like, oh, full brightness, right? Uh, those are also known as the dimmer switch, right? In uh, when you think about switches, but that's where freedom lies. So when I'm talking about this idea of your performance will be within a range, think about the dimmer switch is like the lights are still on. There's still some some brightness there. It's just not as bright as you want it to be or that you think you should be. Um, and I know I've done an episode around digital versus analog thinking. I think it was episode 175 and it was called Three Ways to Overcome a Sales Slump. So I go into a little bit more detail about digital and analog thinking in there. And if you're interested in it, um, you might check that one out. So first first idea here, performance will be within a range. Second thing that you might be thinking about here is identity statements. And I was hearing these, obviously, myself, people were pointing them out to me. My good friend, Michelle, was helping me to see that I was making a lot of identity statements when I was struggling. And I was hearing these in a conversation that I had with a client this week. Um, and and with other clients too, but this week too, I was just hearing a lot of like, like I don't I don't feel I don't feel like I am um, like ready, or I don't think I'm at my best, or I don't 
uh, I'm trying to think of some of the others. I'll, I'll just use my own. Oftentimes it's like, I don't feel like I'm good enough, right? I don't feel like I'm, that I matter or that my problems matter. So therefore I need to like get over it. But those kind of identity statements are like, it's like you're wrapping it all around you. And that can be so sabotaging. There's so much judgment around it. And I had offered to my client this week of like, instead of making identity statements, what if we started talking about the situation? So it's something outside of you, not attached to you, not about you as a person, you as a being, because I will say you are lovable, you are worthy, you deserve really amazing, wonderful things for no other reason than the fact that you are here and you're walking this earth. So you are worthy. So when things are going wrong and you can get get it from a situation standpoint and not make it an identity statement and make it something outside of you. So in the case of my client, she, she's really struggled with being like having a lot of health issues. So there was a lot of, you know, not feeling very good and being exhausted and body run down and all these things. And I was like, so what if you just start talking about that, um, you know, that it you're like, you haven't, well, I'm trying to think of now what I said to her, like the idea is it's the situation that you haven't uh, taken action on these things because you, the situation hasn't allowed for you to. You you haven't been in a in a place where it was the right time for you. So so now it's the time that's the issue. It's not you as the issue, or it's the situation. The situation is that your body needs rest. That's the situation. It's not that you're not good enough, or that you know shame on you for being sick. Like that's a lot of self judgment. But it's like. The situation hasn't been right. The timing hasn't been right. It's okay to put the situation outside of you and not attach yourself to it. So be careful about identity statements. I know we learned this in NLP of trying to not say things like uh, my pain because you attach yourself. Now the pain is like yours. You own it. So instead, we would learn to say things like the pain, the situation, <laughs> like the um, the experience, instead of like, I didn't do this well. Instead, say, it didn't go as well as I wanted it to. Because now you're talking about the thing that didn't go as well, not about you, right? So be careful about your identity statements. And I know I've talked about identity statements and disclaimers as well. And I have an episode, it's episode 190, where I say, stop selling yourself short. And if you haven't listened to it, you might find some value in this idea of identity statements. Just be so careful about the identity statements that you're making about yourself. Try to look for identity statements that are positive. Wrap your identity statements in things that are um, supporting you so that you know that at some point you will be able to reach out to those clients. You will feel you did get a good night's sleep or right now your performance, you're feeling like, gosh, I'm at a seven and I haven't felt like I'm at a seven for a while. So I'm going to take some action today as a seven and be the best seven I can be and make some attempt to continue to move my business forward, have those sales conversations, or schedule your conference or consultation or discovery calls at times of day when you feel your best. If you know that you're really good in the morning, have your consultation calls in the morning. And if you know that, you know, morning's are not your best time, like you're not yet fully feeling like you're firing in all cylinders, don't schedule your calls then, but do things to set yourself up for success because this self-judgment, it's sabotaging you, likely, if you're like me. I hope, I hope you can relate to this episode. And um, yeah, so three takeaways maybe for today. Your performance will be within a range. 
Start checking in with yourself and asking, where are you right now in this moment? On the scale of one to 10, how are you feeling? Also, make sure that you're recognizing any progress. So switch from digital thinking all or nothing. It either went really well or it went horrible and go, what are the things that I did well? What are the things I'm happy with? That gets you into analog thinking versus digital thinking. Again, digital thinking keeps you stuck. Analog thinking gives you freedom. And then I, identity statements. Be really aware of the way that you are talking about yourself and specifically to yourself. Are you making identity statements that are not serving you? Because these things are sabotaging your sales success and they're not needed. All right. We're going to wrap up here. I hope this episode was helpful. I hope there was something in there for you that resonated. And please know that if there was some part of something that I said today that really resonated or fired for you or lit lit a fire or let a light bulb go off, then take take a minute and maybe write write it out. What was it? What was the aha? What was the awareness? If you feel inclined to share it with me, I'd be happy to hear it from you. And if it's something you just want to keep for yourself, just for your own awareness, please do that. And if you need a community of people to support you, come hang out with us at the Sales Maven Society. Uh, You might be surprised at how incredible that community is there of pouring love, supporting, and challenging um, all of us to recognize in ourselves what we bring to the table and how unique and special it is. And again, I mean this sincerely. If you need a little pep talk, you need a little somebody to recognize your genius and your brilliance, I would be happy to do that for you so you can reach out to me. Thank you for listening. Thank you for showing up and um, taking part in these episodes. I wish you continued success in every area of your life and business. And remember, you are worthy. Take care. Thanks for listening to Sales Maven. Visit us online at yoursalesmaven.com slash maven for more resources to boost your confidence and skills. Are you ready to increase your confidence in your sales conversations? I have a gift for you that is going to show you exactly how to do that. It is my closing the sale ebook. It's all about leveling up your confidence, giving you language to use, how to seamlessly move somebody through the sales process. And you can get it right now by going to yoursalesmaven.com forward slash maven. Go grab it.